How's it going guys? Today we got a 2017 Chevy Colorado with the 2.8 liter Duramax in the shop. It's got a whole whack load of emissions issues so we're gonna change it to an off-road vehicle. We're gonna do a DPF delete. We got a Flow Pro exhaust right here. Uh, 875, it's for a 2016 to 17 Colorado it says. If you live in the States, you're probably not gonna be able to get Flow Pro just because they don't ship to the States anymore. A um, Couple of quick things before we do this. Uh, this is for off-road use only. You are not supposed to do this on a road you're using, or on a vehicle you're using on the road. So um, this is just for educational purposes, really. Uh, I don't recommend you do this unless you live in a place where they don't really give a crap about uh, emission systems on your truck. So off-road vehicle, don't do this on, uh, if you're gonna be using it as a daily driver on public roads. And I've never done one of these before, so I don't really know how it's gonna work yet, but I'm just gonna bring you through the process with me and uh, we'll see if it's that hard or, or what. So like I said, this is the first one for me, so we'll see how it goes. We should probably do a little sound comparison, so I'm just gonna fire it up right now um, with a factory exhaust, and then at the end of the video, we can compare the two just for fun. All right, so I put it on ramps because I don't have the luxury of a lift. Gives me a little bit more room under there. The exhaust looks fairly easy to come out, except for it does, uh, the turbo is down there. It kind of comes off the turbo and goes down. So that's gonna be a little bit of a pain. I talked to one of my friends who has done one of these before and he said that it would be best if I took this wheel well out and then I can get the, there's the bolts right on the turbo that uh, there's probably like, it's, it's probably a catalytic, a catalytic converter there. So uh, you're supposed to unbolt that through the wheel well and then uh, just crimp off these coolant lines here put them off to the side and then pull that cat up through the engine bay and the rest of the exhaust is gonna be really simple to take out. So probably just gonna rip this off. I'm just waiting on a tune. I'm using EFI Live to tune this thing. So I'm waiting on a tune to come in my emails and then uh, yeah, we'll get started. I always like to tune a truck before I start ripping components off of in case I have issues with the tune. Then, you know, at least the truck is still all in one piece and uh, we could just figure out the tuning part. So yeah, I'm waiting for the tune, then we'll start ripping it apart. When you get in this truck, it just instantly smells like uh, cow crap, but it doesn't bother me. I used to work on a dairy farm actually, so I'm very used to this smell. This truck belongs to a dairy farm and Bronx just loves sniffing all this. This is mostly cow shit getting knocked off of boots when you get in, but Bronx is just in heaven right now. Anyways, I'm using EFI Live. I gotta get a stock file first from this ECM, send it to my tuner. He's going to use that stock file to build me a delete tune, send it back to me, and uh, then I can program it on the truck. And we're just doing a stock power delete tune. I am not trying to increase the horsepower on this truck or nothing like that. I do not want it to smoke or roll coal or anything like that. That's all bad. So if you're doing this yourself, the best thing is probably to find a, a local shop that uh, that can just flash a single EFI Live tune or else you're gonna have to buy your own like V3 and uh, find somebody that does tunes and email back and forth with them and figure it out. Um, but yeah, this is just how I'm doing it. All right, so I'm just waiting for my tune, but for now I actually put this on a jack stand. I got rid of the ramp just so that this tire would kind of drop lower and uh, kind of right in there is where we see we have to unbolt it right from the turbo. Here's the new pipe, so you can see there's four bolts. They're kind of in a weird pattern, but those are the four bolts that we're gonna have to unbolt on that uh, factory exhaust right there. Here's what the kit looks like, and uh, this has a muffler there. We'll probably fire it up without that muffler though, just to see what it sounds like, because I'm always curious. I did grab some of this free all, and uh, if you can see, it's kind of wet there. I did spray those uh, studs just so that hopefully we don't snap any bolts when we're uh, pulling off that factory exhaust off the turbo. All right, I got the tune. It's just programming as we speak. It's been a long uh, process this morning. It's always you know like that when you're doing something you've never done before. But uh, yeah, hopefully this tune goes well without any issues. And if that's the case, we can finally start to get rid of the, the guts on this thing. All right, it says script finished successfully. That's always my favorite thing to see when tuning a truck. So I'm just gonna fire it up, make sure that it starts and we're good to go. Yeah. 
Excellent. We have a runner. No lights, nothing like that. Good to go. All right, so let's go under and see what we're dealing with. We'll start at the back here. So it looks like this would probably be the first sensor. Uh, you'd unplug this, take that whole module off. Um, sensor here, unplug that. We're gonna take these two wires off and we'll probably leave that up there, I think. Uh, what else do we got? Sorry for the poor quality here, but okay, this looks like, gonna unplug that. And I don't know what we're gonna do about this. Maybe just unscrew that off of the exhaust pipe, whatever. We just, basically, everything that's connected to this exhaust pipe, we have to unplug or, you know, cut or make disconnected, whatever. So, and then moving up to the front, looks like we got a death injector here, another sensor. Gonna unbolt this flange here. And uh, then there's more up there, which we can really only see through the wheel well. So, if I go like this, then yeah, here's another sensor and all that stuff. So basically we're gonna disconnect everything and I'm gonna start at the back of the truck and uh, remove the exhaust. And this guy told me he doesn't want his factory exhaust back. So to make uh, removal easier, I'll probably end up just using a, a Sawzall and just chopping it out in pieces just cause it's super quick and easy. Um, but yeah, you can do it however you want, but the goal of the game is to unplug everything and get the factory exhaust system off the truck. Okay, so here's where I'm at. Again, starting at the back, unplug this guy, it's just hanging. Um, okay, now here's a controversial topic. See how these wires go there? Instead of unplugging it, I just cut them at the end. Now, I don't want anyone to call me lazy because I'm not lazy. What I'm doing here is I am protecting this sensor from getting corroded. So by unplugging it there, because I am scrapping this exhaust, it is going to the metal recyclers. And so if I cut it here, then this still stays plugged in and it can't get any corrosion in there. So if you're planning on maybe putting this back on in the future, I would not do this. I would unplug this and maybe get a, a connector, you know, just to cover this up or tape it all up with some dielectric grease or something. But uh, it's up to you. That's what I'm doing on this truck. So again, I did that on this guy, moving down. This one I just unscrewed out of there. Um, yeah, so I got these all unplugged all the way up to here. I uh, got this guy unplugged and then this uh, def injector is undone as well. So I'm gonna unbolt it here and remove from here back off the truck. And then once we have the rest of the, ex the exhaust off there and we all we have left is the piece up there that comes off the turbo, then we'll worry about that. All right, so I got this out. There's still that uh, cat right off the turbo, but this wasn't bad to get out. I did cut the tailpipe there just so it came out easy. Um, and then I cut this. I don't know if this is a cat too or if this is the DPF, but uh, cut that out um, just so that it dropped through the cross members a lot easier. So yeah, now we're going to see how hard it is to get that uh, piece off the turbo down there. All right, so it looks like there's three wires coming off of this. Um, so this guy, we're gonna go down there and unbolt it. It's gonna have two 10 millimeter bolts. Um, there's another plug right there. Again, I'll probably just cut it flush with there so that it remains closed so it doesn't get any moisture in it. And then there's another one at the bottom. So here's that one. And then, uh, yeah, here's another wire right there that we're gonna have to deal with. It looks like we're also going to have to unbolt this bracket from the bell housing bolts. So we'll take those off there and maybe there too, just so that we can get it up easier. And uh, one other thing that my buddy told me is we might have to cut down here just to cut this flange off so we have enough room to pull it up. But uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, I've never done one of these before, so we'll kind of see how it goes. It also looks like, if you can see that, uh, Oh, it's hard to show you. But right up in there, there's another bolt that's bolting this to the engine. So, looks like a 13 millimeter, maybe, something like that. Might have to take the bracket off too, but up there, there's a few bolts right up in there that we're gonna have to get at. I took this sensor um, just off the top of here, just because I'm using just a quarter inch ratchet with a 13 mil deep socket to get these uh, bolts out or the nuts or studs 
These are all, these, mine are coming out like, my nuts aren't coming off. It's just pulling the whole stud out. But uh, I got two out so far. There's one easy one there to get, and then there's another hard one at the back to get. So I took that little pyro out just so that I can get this in better and get that last hard bolt. Okay, I got it unbolted. So now I guess we'll figure out how to get it up. So with it unbolted, I was able to kind of push it, like give me some more room here. So I actually just cut this there, this flange off. So hopefully we can pull it up. All right, so I got these pliers, which are really good for uh, clamping off coolant lines so I don't have to drain the coolant. So it looks like these are the lines that are gonna be in my way. I might actually just clamp one here, unbolt or unclamp this from the reservoir, pull it off to the side, and then just put a little container under here and catch whatever comes out of the reservoir because it doesn't look like there's much in this reservoir at all. And then I can grab these and just fold them over to the, to the kind of closer to the driver's side and then get these wires kind of out of the way. And then we should be able to pull that uh, pipe right up through the engine bay. This is literally all the coolant that came out there. So if yours is anything like mine, you probably don't even need to catch that. But now I can tuck this over to the side, get these wires out of here, and then I'm gonna get another hand to kind of push up from the bottom and I'll try to pull it out the top. I unplugged this, I think it's your VGT actuator right off that turbo. And uh, now it looks like there's a lot more room. So I don't think it's gonna be a problem getting this thing out. All right, got it out. Just be very careful. This is a plastic plug on your turbo actuator here, and this is all plastic. So like everything nowadays, it's all made of friggin' plastic. So just be careful you don't uh, go too hard with it. Uh, I got kind of jammed up in there a bit. So what I did was I had it almost all the way up and I took out these four heat shield bolts and just was able to pull the heat shield to the side like that a bit. And then I was able to kind of wiggle it the rest of the way out. So it wasn't too bad once I had this heat shield unbolted, then it came out pretty pretty not too bad. So, and then obviously with this flange cut off the bottom. I don't know how you would take this, this out in like in one piece. Like that would be a huge job to actually remove this without uh, cutting it. So hopefully you can just cut it. <laughs> All right, so now hopefully the easy part and that's putting the exhaust back on. So make sure you reuse this factory gasket um, that, the, that was on the truck and we're probably going to be using the factory bolts i believe so yeah i'm going to bolt this up and it says you can tighten this right up and then uh, we'll go on to the rest of it all right this new downpipe is bolted up it was much easier uh bolting it up than it was taking the bolts out so uh yeah i'm hoping it's smooth sailing from here on out that was kind of the last thing i was worried about so i'm just going to go ahead and continue putting on the exhaust and i'll let you know if there's any issues with that Okay, I got about half the exhaust on right now. It's going super good, super easy. But who doesn't want to hear what this thing sounds like straight piped? Because I have to put the muffler on, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to fire it up first. I'll just show you guys where we're at. Um, okay, so we're at here. So that's all just straight piped right off the turbo. This is where the muffler is going to go. And then after the muffler, it's just the tailpipe. So we're going to... See what it sounds like though, straight piped, and then we'll see what it sounds like at the end with the muffler. What do you think? I couldn't really hear it because I was in the driver's seat, but when I get home and edit this video, then I'll be able to hear it better. So let me know in the comments if you liked it or if you think it kind of sounds like, you know, a, a cat dying or something like that. All right, so I just got these two pieces to put back in and uh, then that will be it. Okay, that's the back of the truck. Here's the muffler, or resonator, and all the way along up to the downpipe and up to the turbo. So this is uh, all done. It's all clamped up and the exhaust is on. Okay, now with the exhaust all installed, let's uh, have a listen.
All right, well, that's, uh, that's it. So obviously make sure you put your coolant lines back in here and you have your, your turbo back plugged in. Probably top up your coolant if you have to. And as far as I know, you don't need to unplug any throttle valves or anything on the EGR side of things. Um, that's what my tuner said anyways. He said none of that needs to be unplugged. Uh, but go underneath, check for exhaust leaks, and uh, just make sure all your wiring is tied up nicely and that it's not gonna melt on the exhaust or anything like that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. So if you've got questions, ask in the comments or shoot me a message on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. Um, please like and please subscribe. I put a lot of effort and, and into these videos so that you guys can learn something and you don't have to waste your money getting someone else to do it for you. So, uh, but yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.